Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about angular displacement. And there's a picture with some guy holding a, an object. And as he is dropping his arm, this object is actually rotating. It's not going straight up and down because your arm is like floating. <laughs> right? You see my picture here? It like goes circular, rotates from your elbow. Um, so two things that we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at angular displacement, which is a different word for just fine, but angle and radian. Angular displacement is just the angle and radians that one object travels. It's the ang angle. This is back uh, from chapter 4.1 when we learned what radians were. But I just skipped this part of it. Now we're going back to it. We're going to put all the real life stuff together. So um, this, again, is this is in radians. It's just the angle. You guys should already be able to tell me a lot of angles and radians when you look at a circle because we've studied them for two months. And then the second thing that we're looking at is um, you can also find theta by using the arc length. And the arc length in this picture would be, if there is actually a circle here, the length of it. It's part of the circumference. So the arc, uh, the arc length is like part of the circumference. And then you guys know what R stands for. Please. You know what R stands for, right? Help me out. What does R stand for? Radius. The radius. And when we write the radius, this is the part you might forget about, so we'll write it down. When we write the radius, it is always in the form of length per one radian, or per one radius. Remember when we talk about radians, radians are the measure around the circle, the angle that is formed by taking the radius and putting it around the circle. If we take the radius and we go that far around the circle, the angle, the central angle, is the radian that matches up. <coughs> so that's where this comes from. Just remember that we are going to use this unit when we use um, radius. <clears throat> so this might make a little bit of sense here. If we have a Ferris wheel and it rotates two and a half times, what is the angular displacement of the people on the Ferris wheel? So angular displacement is just asking for theta in radians. So if you imagine a Ferris wheel, there's some people, they're going around two and a half times. What's the angle they travel through? That's what I was asking. Okay? Do you know what they would travel through if they went around one whole time? Two pi. What about two whole times? Or pi. What about two and a half times? So we know the answer is five pi. But I'm going to show you how to use the formula to get it. Okay? So we're going to use the top formula, which just says, Theta is equal to the number of revolutions, so that's going to be two and a half rev multiplied by two pi radians per one revolution. That is saying it is two pi around the circle one time. We're going to multiply that by two and a half times around the circle. Does that make sense? Because right now, it's pretty easy numbers. It might not make as much sense when we start combining it with other stuff. So I want you to really understand this part. That's where we spend a whole day on it. Now, if you're in physics, you start out the beginning of the year by talking about converting units. If you're not in physics, look at converting units right now. When I multiply straight across, what happens if I am multiplying by something that has revolutions, but I'm also dividing by something that has revolutions? They cancel. What is my, my units when I'm all done? And isn't that what I was? Isn't that what I was trying to find? Say yeah, yeah. in radians. I was trying to find radians. So there's one way to kind of check that you're doing this right is that your units are going to cancel and give you the units when you're done. Now, uh, five pi radians is an exact answer. 
I might ask you to find an exact answer. If it's exact, you don't type it in the calculator. You just do 5 pi, write it down. If it's approximate, that's when we pull out our calculator. So go ahead and type in 5 pi. Let's do three decimal places. I will look for correct rounding. I will look for the correct units next to the number. So this is now real life application. You have to pay attention to accuracy and correct units. Other than that, I will give you the formulas. You will have to memorize the formulas. You just have to know how to use them and which formula to use. So example two, determine the positive radiance measure of the angle that a second hand of a clock travels through the given time. So when I read determine the positive radiance measure here, this, that means just find theta, asking what the angle is. We know the angle is going to be in radians. If you're not sure what it's asking, maybe a picture will help. 30 seconds. Goes from here to here. 30 seconds. It's asking what the angle is. Do you know the answer yet? Oh, don't look where I ended. Like, think about how far it's traveled. Yeah, we traveled half the circle, that's fine. But now let's go do the formula to see how that works with the formula. When I give you one that you can't look at and just guess. So um, the formula says theta equals the number of revolutions. So how many revolutions did this second hand go if it went 30 seconds? a half, 4.5, of a revolution. Now, if you don't know how I got a half, we took 30 and we divided that by 60. We did a part over the whole, we just found a fraction of the whole. 30 seconds out of 60 seconds is a half. That's the number of revolutions. We multiply that by 2 pi radians per 1 rev. Our revolutions cancel and we get radians when we're done. It's the exact same answer that you guys told me it would be. And if I need an approximation, 3.142. Could you look at 55 seconds and tell me that answer? Like, without doing the formula? Here's my clock. 55 seconds. Or are you going to have to do some math to figure that one out? That's not one that we know from before. Okay, so we're going to do the number of revolutions. How do I find the number of revolutions? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 55 divided by 60 is the number of revolutions. <coughs> just in case I need an exact answer, just in case I need an exact answer, um, I would want a reduced exact answer. Do you guys know how to reduce on your calculator? Because, by the way, this chapter, you can use the calculator for. Yes. Okay. Um, how do you reduce it? Huh? How do you make this into a reduced fraction? No. Math. Rec. Enter. Yeah, let me pull. So this is 11 twelfths of a re revolution, and we will, and now you guys were already saying this, multiply that by 2 pi radians per 1 revolution. So we get 11 pi over 6 radians for our exact answer. And then if we type that in, then we will get the approximation. 5.7, 5. 5.76, 5. yeah. There's a glare on my computer. All right, you guys try the third one. Yeah. 
and then I read it. But you. All right, you guys up, everyone? And I'm walking around just to make sure that um, you started it correctly because I don't want to do the whole thing wrong if it started off wrong. So don't, don't put a rounded answer, um, Julie, don't put a rounded answer at that. Revolutions. So when I did the number of revolutions for this one, I did 85 over 60. For this one, I did 30 over 60. So the number of revolutions is what your first task is. And one minute and 20 seconds is not 120. 80, because one minute is 60, so be careful. If you go too fast, sometimes you make slight mistakes. 80 over 60, and that would be four-thirds. So four-thirds revolution multiplied by two pi radians per one rev. Revolutions canceled. Get eight pi over three radians for our exact answer. Approximately 8.378 radians. I did that in my head, just leave it down. Questions on move. So you can find the angle. The next says, example three, a runner goes around a circular track that has a diameter of 8.5 meters. If he runs around the track for a distance of 60 meters, what is his angular displacement? So if I'm asking for angular displacement, what are we trying to find? Theta, theta which is in radians. If I can't figure out what to do, maybe I draw the track. Maybe I draw the person running. I hate running. Um, anyway. So the person's running, and what do we know about this track? Okay, diameter. That goes through the center. But all of my formulas, nothing has diameter in it. What do they use? Radius. radius. So we're going to find the radius by taking half of the diameter, 4.25 meters per one radius. There's our radius, 4.25 meters per one radius. Okay. I also know that the runner ran for 60 meters. That's a length around the track. What is that called when we talk about around the, the circle? Okay, circumference would be around one time. Is this exactly one time around? We don't know. So there's another word in the formulas. It is the arc length. It is, because he might only be going a little part around the circle. We don't know. It's part of the circumference, which is called the arc length, which is represented by S. So we are given S, and we are given R, and we are trying to find theta. Which formula do we use? S over R. Yeah, that second one, S over R. So we're going to have radi or, uh, uh, theta equals the 60 meters over 4.25 meters per one radius. So when I put that over it, uh, on top of each other, I now have a fraction inside of a fraction. So instead of dividing by a fraction, multiply by its reciprocal. And when you flip it, you should say, oh, my meters cancel. And I'm left with radians, because that's what we're trying to get. Now you can't leave. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't leave a decimal inside a fraction. 
So is there a way to change that fraction, write it in reduced form, but not a decimal at the end, you know? Well, you can, or um, since you are able to use your calculator, you can also use the math rack. It'll do it for you. Yeah, you have to multiply by like four, I think. But um, if you do math rack, it'll change it into the fraction for you. 240 over 17. So that's the, that is the exact answer, the approximate answer would be 14.118 radians, which was what I had before I hit math rack. So I got both answers. Um, I have the ability of telling the future. And I'm telling you, on a quiz or test, there will be some questions that say, put the exact answer. There will be some questions that say, round the answer to three decimals. So you have to be able to do either. So as you're doing your work, you should have the exact answer somewhere in your work before you have that final answer. Just so you're prepared for either. All right, on the back, um, we took that second formula from the front and just rearranged it. That, that second formula was theta equals S over R. If you multiply both sides by R, then you get S equals R theta. It's the exact same formula from the front. It's just written in a different form. So if you want to solve for the arc length, you would use this one. <coughs> so a second hand on the clock is six inches long. How far does the end of the second hand travel in 15 seconds? So in 15 seconds, we should already know where that is around the circle, like how much of a revolution that is around the circle. We should know that. But if not, how do I find that? 15 seconds around the circle, how much of a revolution? How do you find that? Did you knew it? Okay. You put 15 over 60, right? Right? So that's my revolution. <coughs> so we need to find the arc length. It's not going to go all the way around, so it's just going to be a fourth of the circumference. We need to find that. So we're going to do um, S equals our radius is six inches per one radius. Every time you write the radius, you, you want to put the length per one radius. <laughs> We're going to multiply that by theta, which is one fourth of a revolution, multiplied by two pi r, no, two pi radians, sorry, per one revolution. So this right here is theta. So I'm doing my radius multiplied by theta. Now, do we have any units that cancel? Revs cancel. What else cancels? Rad cancels. What do we have left over? And isn't that what I'm trying to get? Like, arc length is a length. It's how far around the circle. We're trying to get that. So, let's see. What do we get here? Oh, 12 pi over one. So when I cancel everything, I get three pi inches. Which is probably not something that you could really describe lengthwise. So if we type three pi into our calculator, it might make more sense when you hear, oh, that's approximately 9.425 inches. Less than nine and a half inches. All right, example four is find the measure of the central angle, and we're going to find it two ways. We're going to find it in degrees and radians. I'm sorry, DMS is degrees, minutes, and seconds, so it's going to be like really exact. If the arc length is five centimeters on the circle with a diameter of six centimeters. 
Do any of our formulas have diameter? So what do I really want from that diameter information? The radius is 3 centimeters. And again, that's going to be 3 centimeters per 1 radius. We know the arc length is going to be 5 centimeters. So I'm just approximating how far around 5 centimeters is. That's just an approximation. We have to find the central angle from geometry, that's that angle, that makes the arc length 5 centimeters. The angle, right at the center. So which formula should we use if we know the arc length and we know the R? The one from the front, theta equals S over R. So our S is 5 centimeters, and our radius is 3 centimeters per 1 radius. So we'll take 5 centimeters, and instead of dividing by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal, which cancels the centimeters. Get 5 thirds radians. Um, I do not think you have to change that into a decimal. Five thirds is kind of, kind of like a common fraction we use a lot. But if you do change it into a decimal, it would be 1.667 radians. I kind of like five thirds radians better. So that is in radians. We did that part. Now I'm asking you to find it in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Is this degree? So to do it in degrees, minutes, and seconds, you have to first put it into degrees. And in section 4.1, two months ago, we found out how to change any radian into degrees. So I'm going to, um, hold on one second. I'm going to start with 5 thirds radians. And then <clears throat> I'm just going to remind you that, um, so, you know, here's 5 thirds radians approximately. If I change this to degree, will this angle change? So it's going to be the same measurement. It's just like it's going to look different because we're converting it to different units. But it's still going to be the same measurement. So whatever we multiply has to have a value of 1. We cannot change the value of this picture. It's still going to be this picture. So I'm only allowed to multiply by a value of 1. So you tell me what I can multiply by that changes radians, it divides out radians, puts it into degrees. So you're telling me what degrees and radians equals each other. 180 degrees and pi radians are the thing. So we can multiply by 180 degrees per one, no, pi, I mean radian, or pi radians. Those are equivalent. They're the exact same place on the on unit circle. So this is really like multiplying by volume one. <coughs> so multiply that. And I get 300 over pi degree. So once you convert it, it is now in degrees. Now we can use DMS on our calculator. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 300 divided by pi. This is about 95.some degrees. It does not matter. It only matters when we use tray, like sine of something. Because um, what the calculator is, it's just taking 300 divided by 3.1415926, whatever the rest of the number does. Okay. Now, I need to put this into DMS. So just a reminder, to get to DMS, we do second angle, which is the X button, and then Choice four is DMS. So we converted it to degrees. 300 over pi is degrees. And then you do the DMS. It's 34 point. Where's the DMS button? The DMS button is second app. 
Okay, and then we have one more example to do. How are we done? Okay. We have one more example to do. Any questions before I go on? It's kind of a lot, but it's not too bad. Tomorrow it'll get to be a lot. All right. We have the Earth. There it is. The Earth's radius is approximately 3959 miles. It is. I looked it up. Do you guys know the latitude of the equator? Zero. Yeah, the latitude of the equator is zero. So right here, if I go straight across, this is like zero degrees. Here it tells me the latitude of Rome, Italy is 41 and some degrees. So, okay, so there's Rome. And then Copenhagen, Denmark is 55 some degrees, degrees plus some. So there's Copenhagen. So that degrees rises above the um, zero degree equator. <coughs> we have to find how far the two cities are apart. So in my picture, I'm trying to find right here. Tape measure, start at Rome to Denmark. Yeah. Tape measure? No. <coughs> what are we going to use instead? Um, okay, what am I trying to find? Like, what did I just highlight in orange? What did I just highlight? What is that? The what? That is arc length. That is an S. So we look at our formulas when we're trying to find S. That's the arc length at the top of this page. S equals R theta. Do we know R? Yes. We do know R. Do we know theta, which is the theta between the two cities? No. We do not know the theta between the two cities. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have an intuition on maybe how we could find the theta between the two cities? Some intuition. Right. So you, you said difference. What operation is that? Subtract. Subtract the two. So we're going to take the bigger one. Now, can you do this on your calculator? Good, then you can totally do it on your calculator. I'm going to do it by hand, show off a little bit, just kidding. Uh, but some of you don't have a calculator. If you want to do it by hand, I'm going to do it by hand. Subtracting. The problem is these are in like chunks of 60. They're not tens like normal numbers. They're 60s. So when I go to subtract 40 minus 54, I have to borrow from the 55. But what I'm actually borrowing is not 10, I'm borrowing 60. So that makes it 100. But other than that, it's pretty easy. Now, if you're doing it on your calculator, please tell me if you do not get 13 degrees, 46 minutes, and 24 seconds. If you're doing that on your calculator, you're going to need that on your calculator if you just type it in or if you subtract it. Please tell me if you don't get that, so I can help you. Where is the second?
What do we know about theta? Oh, it, it's an angle. It has to be in radian. Is this in radian? So this is not theta yet. It is just the degree form of that exact angle. It's in degrees. We need it to be in radians to use the formula we're using today. So how do we change degrees into radians? You multiply by a value of 1 that converts radians from degrees. We have to cancel out the degrees, so that's why I know that 180 goes on the bottom. You multiply by pi radians divided by 180. Okay, this is not my final answer. This is just the radians. And I'm going to leave that entire number on my calculator, so I'm going to use that entire number. I just wrote down some of the numbers in my work. Okay. My next part is, what am I really trying to find? What? S. Yes, so I'm trying to find the length. I'm trying to find that arc length. And that says to take theta, which we just found, and multiply that by the radius. So I'm going to take uh, my radius, which is 3959 miles per one radius, and multiply that by that last answer that I just had. I'm going to get 951.704. The radians cancel out, so I get miles. Which is what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to find the distance between two cities. That's going to be in uh, length of 70 miles. Now, if you did not get 751.7, sorry, if you did not get that answer, I'm putting my work up. If you did not get that answer, you should ask a question. Um, I'm going to shut up the recording, but uh, the assignment is a worksheet, which I will also pass out while you're asking the questions that you have. You should start it. You should start it. You should start it.